So, introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Doreen, and this is my dog Spanky. And um, today is his birthday. He's 16 years old. He was born May 11th, 1998. He was this little when I got him. And now he's this big, and he's gray, and he's old, and he doesn't walk anymore. And that's why I have that stroller behind me. And he has kidney failure, and I have to make sure he has his water. He's blind. <laughs> he stopped walking two months ago. He's been an amazing dog and friend, and I love him very much. So we're just enjoying the day and um, spending what little bit of time I have left with him. What do you have to say, Spanky? Do you have anything to say? Do you? Say something to the camera. I've been waiting for you to come along and I've been looking for an excuse to write this song and here you are here The first dog I bought was the dog from my ex-boyfriend Pete. It was a pug. And Rudy was an awesome pug. And then I thought, let's get another pug. And then I went to the pet store. I just said, whichever one comes over to me is going to be the one I'm going to take. And this one jumped out of the crowd and came running over and put his little paws up and reached up for me and I grabbed him and I took him. I surgery when he was a puppy. Renal detachment when he was about five. Heartworm, foreign body lodged in his intestines. First surgery up by his neck. Second surgery down by his back legs. Kidney failure. He does have an adrenal mass on his right adrenal glands. Know that through a sonogram. And, oh, pancreatitis. Well, and he's deaf, and he's blind, and he can't walk. Yeah. He lives for my love. And as long as I'm around him, he's totally fine. I first started using the stroller when my friend Angela gave me hers. Since then, I've already went through three strollers. They range from $50 to $130 if you want a good one, which I happen to say I have a good one. It's a, it's a jogger, so I could run with him. That is if I ran. I can get around the city much easier with the stroller than I ever could have carrying him, so I never did go through a period of having to carry him, except up and down the steps, in and out of the stroller, things like that. I can go anywhere with my stroller. I go to work daily. Um, I have to drop him off at the babysitter. I have to hop on the bus in the morning. Some bus drivers are getting to know me now in the morning and they let me on the bus, thank God. Strollers have to be closed. Even for a paralyzed, even for a paralyzed dog, he's just crippled. I'm really, I mean, if I take him out, I'll just lay on the floor. That's why he's in there. Is there anybody on here? Dead? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do this every day from work. It's a bitch. On the way home, the bus drivers are not so nice. They don't know me, and they tell me to get on the next bus. He's a crippled dog. So I usually have him in here, it's a carrier. He can't walk. Can I just go to the back? I gotta break it down. I take him into the subway. It's not easy getting down the steps, step by step by step. I hope and pray that someone will come up to me and ask me if I need help. And um, I'd say probably 90% of the time, someone's really nice and they help me. Then there's that other 10% of the time where I'm dragging the stroller up the stairs and 
or down. And it's hard. It's hard on my body. And what about, I mean, do you go into stores and stuff? Like oh, I take him into the supermarkets. I take him everywhere. I take him to the hair salon. I just had my hair done. I take him to the hair salon. I take him to the gym with me. I park him in the corner. I'm lucky enough that my gym allows me to put him in the corner while I can go do some circuit training. There's no place I don't take him. I take him out to eat if I'm going out to eat and it's an outside cafe. He can't be left alone. I'm worried that something may happen to him if I do leave him alone. Talk to me about the peeing. <laughs> because he had two back surgeries. He, he'd kind of like try to lift his leg up and it was cute. He'd kind of like, he'd kind of just lift because his instinct was to lift it, but he couldn't really hold it. So when he would go to lift it, I'd be like, all right, I'll just hold it up for him. That way he feels like, you know, he's doing it. God, it's crazy, but it's true. Yeah, I just started assisting him, holding him up. And the thing was that I held his leg because if I didn't, he'd squat and pee all over the front of his legs. And then I'd have to bring him upstairs and clean him up. And that was one of the reasons why I started to really hold him so I would aim the urine or his pee away from him. Who wants a smelly dog? I didn't, he sleeps with me. So describe the process that you have now. Oh, I have a Tiffany box that is about this tall and about this wide. And I put him over that and I put a wee wee pad underneath it and I just twist his little body up and I palpate his bladder. The bladder feels sort of like an orange inside and I find it and I, and I just press on it and he releases quickly. You know, anybody that ever watched him, they knew how to do it, although I don't think they ever did it quite as good as mom. He's a lot of work, it could be a burden at times, but you know what? I took on the responsibility and I'm gonna see it to the end. And there they are. Good boy, Spanky. Good boy. Good boy. Good job. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's brought so much love into my life. Laughter, joy. What else is there? Well, come to the door. I'm at the door. Oh, I see. <laughs> this is scary as hell. Sorry. Oh, I'm I feel very, very close to her. And um, she's an unbelievable person. I really mean it. I mean, it's, you know, when you're born, you have to be lucky. This dog was lucky. I mean, that, that he had Doreen. This, she is an amazing pet owner. There's nobody who takes care of the dog the way Doreen takes care of Spanky in terms of cooking for him and taking care of him the way she does, taking him out for walks, even though he can't walk so he could just enjoy the sun. Um, this, this dog was blessed to have her as an owner. I only have it with a, a, an animal, with a dog. Wait a minute, you say you have patience with an animal, you don't have patience with people? I don't really love people. Pet him? Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, he's very friendly. Hi. Although I can't see or hear you. Do you have to pet him? <laughs> oh, 
people just are interested. And I think the stroller well, adds filming. to the fascination. Well, you think that's what it is? Well, people don't expect to see a dog? No, they're usually like, oh my God, I thought that was a baby. And I've had other people come up to me, that's one ugly baby. <laughs> and you know, hey, I think people are just, most people are animal lovers but you have the ones that totally relate to me and they want to touch him, they, they want to pet him, uh, they want to know everything about him and, you know, it's nice and especially kids, when kids smile, there's coloring, they say, oh my God, I never saw this color, what color is this? And I say, he's old, it's, he's gray and I, I guess he's got a, He's so old that he's developed so much white in his face that it is a unique color because most dogs don't live this long. My little boy. You're a handsome fella. <laughs>
find it silly because at the end of the day, you have to look at the animal as it's a living being. That's what it is. It's a soul. It's a living being. So you should treat, you should care for it just as you would care for your child. Nobody's going to, you know, neglect their child. If you look at these beings, they have all the things we have. Eyes, nose, mouth. So they're actually a lot more similar to us than different. And I think that Doreen, uh, we've actually never talked about it, but I just know by the way she acts, sees them that way, just as loving members of a family that are equal and in some ways better than human beings. I do equate it to a child. I really do. This almost killed me with my child. I know I shouldn't equate it, but... <laughs> it's crazy how much that he loves me. And the thing that I think is the most amazing thing is when I could pick him up from the babysitter and he's sleeping and within one minute, his head is up, he's looking around, he smells me. It's, he smells me. Like something about that wakes him out of his sleep because he loves me. Mommy's here. Oh, mommy's here. Ah, hi. Oh, why? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. I said I want you to do that. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, I miss you too. Oh, he's always had separation anxiety since he was a puppy. He's been like this since he was young. Always. to have stimulation. He has to be touched. He does, can't see. He can't hear. He's in his own world, basically. And he's like, damn it, if I can't see or hear anybody or walk, someone better hold me, touch me, feel me, do something. Give me something. Give me some kind of attention. And if I was like that too, picture being blind and deaf and couldn't walk and you had nobody to hold you or to play, touch your hair, or pet you, that would be a very lonely world. That would be shit, depressing and sad. Right? Yeah. They have feelings too. You like that, buddy? Well, when I first started to watch him, his walking was very good. He didn't really bump into many things. Um, but then as the years went on, I started to see his walking got a little bit worse. Right. And he did start bumping into more things as he was walking. But Recently, he just lost his... Lost his strength in his legs. and. Right. Spanky uh, would have been gone a year ago, right. with, with, I think, with most people. I don't think I've ever had such a bond with an animal the way Doreen has. So like, if I had a dog that became so high maintenance, uh -huh. I, yeah, I probably would, like most people, I would think, uh, have put him down at this point. Is taking care of this now very disabled animal, you know, really uh, keeping Doreen from reaching her potential. I don't think, I think if Spanky could comprehend that, I think he wouldn't want that.
He just had a seizure. He woke me up out of my sleep. <sighs> Scared the hell out of me. I thought he was going to die right then and there. Right now he's just kind of whimpering like a baby. And I'm just holding him, consoling him. And he's just trembling right now. He just keeps on trembling every half second. Okay, baby. It's like he's sleeping, and of course, and I could just keep on keeping him around while he's sleeping. But what's happening is his organs, everything's shutting down. Yeah. It's always been my decision, and just my gut tells me that I know my dog. He's just. Well, that's it. He's ready. Listen to me. He is your dog, and you do know. I do know. <laughs> I really hope so. Yeah, well, this is how he usually is. So this is how he's been. This is why I kind of was like, okay, I think it's time. My hardest thing is to know that after I leave him here, he's going to be put in a freezer and be picked up. I do think well, about it because it's my baby. Yeah, but they'll, they'll handle him well. So. That's what I care about. That's why you work in this field. You know, ultimately... The decision from this point on would never be wrong, you know. Um, you know, how we think of euthanasia is we want to end his suffering. So we don't want him to get to a point where he's really, really suffering before we decide to elect that. I fucking don't want to do it. And I just think I should do it. Because I don't think... I don't think he's happy anymore. My baby, I don't think you're happy anymore. Oh, he's passing gas. <laughs> All right, this we'll be is right back. Thank you. This is just the authorization. Cause I'm doing the right thing, right? Um. So what do you do? You just. So when you're ready, I'll yeah. give him the anesthetic agent, and that will just render him unconscious. And then I have to follow that immediately with the medication that stops his heart. This is just a flush. Oh, God. I'll see you in heaven. I will, buddy. I promise. Go find me. All right. Just... You're doing the right thing. Tomorrow will be, on Sunday, will be one month since I put Spanky to rest. Life has been very different, sort of lonely, not as much work. I kind of don't know what to do with myself other than do all the things that I've been wanting to do that I haven't been able to do, such as, you know, photography and do short films or whatever it is, all my dreams. Music, also, yeah. Do open mic nights, um, it's bittersweet. And I think I might have felt more guilt if I didn't do it the way I did. But that's why I gave him all of me. Yes, I miss him, I miss him so much. I sleep with his blanket 
I haven't washed it yet. I don't want to wash it. It smells like him. Uh, I just miss him. I miss him. When we first started filming this documentary, we started it on May 11th. It was Spanky's 16th birthday. And we sat in the grass in Central Park. And I'm thinking now, I'm sitting here, and he's not here with me. And this is the end of the documentary. And um, I really didn't know how long he was going to stay around for. I welcomed every day. And yes, it was a struggle to carry him up the stairs, to stroll him everywhere I did. Whatever I did, it was complicated. But I did it out of love, and I did it because he still had the will to live. Unconditional love, it's hard to find that with somebody. I've never got that from another person. And he gave me that. My dog gave me unconditional love. And I think maybe people are looking for that type of love. What, are, what better philosophy should we all follow than to love one another and be kind? Because in the end, kindness and love is the only thing that matters.